the boiler snake's taking the day off today, so uh, NVIDIA has enabled FreeSync variable refresh rate on NVIDIA graphics cards, so that means you could use a FreeSync monitor with an NVIDIA graphics card, so maybe hell has actually frozen over. I don't know. This, this is our first test that we're using. This, this is a Ryzen 5 2600X with a 2080 Ti. And I've also tried the EVGA 1060 and some other graphics cards. But the first monitor that we're testing is the Crossover 554K. That's a 55 inch 4K FreeSync monitor TV, whatever you want to call it, that, uh, that I imported. And uh, it's not got the best FreeSync range, but testing with the pendulum, 40 to 60 hertz on the refresh seems to work pretty well. Now it does not exhibit any issues with the uh, the flickering at like the lower end of the thing, but we saw that it, you know from Nvidia at CES that like sometimes when we're talking about like 20 or 25 FPS that you get a little bit of flicker from it. Well, on this monitor, you don't get any flicker, but you will still get tearing when the frame rate drops below about 38. FPS. So I'm going to say the safe range on this monitor is 40 to 60 FPS. Oh, and there's a full table of results on the level one forum. So all of the Korean monitors that I've tested so far and probably more as time goes on will be added. So yeah, let the, let the free sync testing commence. The first monitor up for our testing is Crossover 324KS. That is by far my f favorite Korean monitor. They're 4K, they're a little overclockable. You can maybe get 70 hertz out of it, give or take. I've reset everything to the defaults here though. So we're running a maximum of, of 60 hertz. And the question is, how does it work with the G-Sync compatible thing? Well, they're not, they're not officially on Nvidia's list, like I said, but I'm happy to report that it actually works really well using the Pendulum demo all the way down to about 20 to 22 FPS, all the way up to 60 FPS. Now, the thing that is critical here with this monitor is that you set the refresh rate to 60 Hertz and not 59 Hertz. You see the, 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 the DDC, EDID information that the monitor advertises to the computer is like 29 FPS, 30 FPS, 59 FPS, and 60 FPS. You wanna make absolutely sure that the monitor is set for 60 FPS because if you don't, you're gonna get tearing around that 59, 60 FPS. I was thinking that I was gonna to have to use CRU to change it, but nope, runs great. I will say that sometimes it does have a little bit of a stutter between 20 to 30 FPS, but I use the high-speed camera and it's not tearing, but it's just that the motion isn't completely smooth. And that may be something in Nvidia's low frame rate compensation stuff. It may be something with the monitor. 30 to 60 FPS is the most solid range, but you can go as low as like 22 and it's mostly fine from 22 to 30 at the low end. So for 4K, I mean, that's pretty good. That's good news for people that are, you know, owners of like the 2070 or the 2080, uh, you know, graphics card. You wanna run for the full 4K with some some stuff, but you can maintain that 30 to 60 FPS sweet spot. It's, it's pretty smooth. Now listen, with the 3440 by 1440 crossover 34U uh, 100, that's a great monitor. It's got a hundred Hertz. It'll go up to a hundred Hertz, but around 100 hertz, especially if you go slightly over 100 hertz, you will see some tearing. So if you see tearing in your game, use the CRU utility to set the top end of the refresh rate to be like 95 hertz instead of 100 hertz, and you'll be all set. Oh, and don't forget to set free sync in the on-screen display. You might have to do that with some of these Korean panels. They don't come with free sync on by default. You gotta turn it on in the on-screen display. That's the Asus MG279Q. Now, what you see there is what you get when you drop below about 50 FPS. So I'm gonna say the safe range on this is 55 FPS, 52 FPS maybe, to 144 Hertz. So this is 144 Hertz. Now strangely, this was one of the monitors they mentioned in some of the CES coverage, but the official press release that came out on uh, January 15th, it's the uh, MG, 278Q, not the 279Q, that is a, you know, officially G-Sync compatible. So that's probably why they took the uh, 279 off the list, but you can work around it. You can work around it with the custom resolution utility or just making sure that your game can run above 55 FPS. That's the crossover 3412UM behind me. It's a 3440 by 1440 ultra wide, not curved, supports free sync. It's normal free sync range is like 40 to 95 Hertz, something like that, you'd have to check my old review. The G-Sync range is pretty wide. It's 20 FPS. I mean, 
it looks a little choppy to me at 20 fps it's 20 fps to you know 95 hertz don't have to mess with cru or anything like that when you play games you know if you've got the the full stutter inducing like low frame rate gaming no it's completely fine it didn't do anything weird so i don't think cru is really needed it's going to be better a better experience if your game is running at at least 30 fps but with G-Sync a 30 to 95 FPS range, like actually playing games like Fallout and GTA, that's really pretty good. So that's the crossover 3412 UM. Seal of approval, works great. The system behind me is a PX276. That's Pixio. So this is our first Pixio monitor. It's a 2560 by 1440 monitor that has a free sync range all the way up to 144 Hertz. Well, on our G-Sync test system, 20 FPS, this is the best looking monitor I've seen at the low end, at that like 20 to 30, like super low spot. But the 20 to 144 Hertz seems to be working great. Actual gameplay, actual gameplay testing, not just the pendulum. Uh, everything actually worked shockingly well on the PX276. I think this has probably been the most, like, you know, out of Asus and the crossover, the FreeSync support on or G-Sync compatible support, I guess I should say, on NVIDIA cards. Uh, this has been the best so far, the PX276. Now, I've still got some more testing to do, but it's basically a flawless experience on the, uh, on the Pixio PX276. So good job, Pixio. Now this is when things started to get interesting. The Pixio PX347C, I couldn't get to work. Nothing that I did would make FreeSync show up. Now you can use custom resolution utility and set the FreeSync range. And you could probably do that on this monitor and be okay. I did that and it did kind of work, but it was also kind of flaky. So on the table, I'm just gonna say no. And I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It was, uh, it was just being all types of weird when I turned on FreeSync on the Pixio PX347C. Now this was a really early model, so that might be part of it and maybe fixed in the firmware. So if you've got a PX347C and you get it working, definitely post in our forums at Level 1 Tech so that everybody can kind of see, because maybe it's just a firmware issue on my particular monitor. This is the BenQ, it's 4K, 28 inch monitor. FreeSync on it works great. Now this is a recent monitor, so I would expect the FreeSync is basically figured out, and it is. I did the full range from 20 hertz all the way to 60 hertz because you know it's a it's a 4k monitor uh and that was with hdr turned off hdr turned on um hdr turned on might need a little more testing but your mileage may vary so again the whole like 20 fps judders thing i really think that's something in the nvidia driver for like low frame rate compensation because on the freezing side they don't really support frame rates that low but 30 to 60 fps the BenQ, G-Sync compatible, solid. This is the Pixio PXC32. We've got a great free sync range, G-Sync compatible range from 20 to 144 hertz. Like the, most of the other monitors, really recommend 30 to 144 hertz. You get a little bit of flickering between 20 and 30. Uh, it's not the worst that I've seen, but it's also not the best that I've seen between 20 and 30, but looks great. Looks amazing. Good job, Pixio. This is the new PX277. It says new PX277 next to it. Not really that new because I reviewed it kind of a while ago. But hey, guess what? FreeSync or G-Sync compatibility on the 2080 Ti, it's all roses. Now, I'm gonna recommend 24 FPS and above. It'll do 20 to 24, but 24 is what's running behind me. I mean, you definitely want a game that'll run faster than 24 FPS. But like 30 to 144 hertz, it's great, no flickering, no weirdness, nothing strange is going on, it's great. So there we are, free sync on Team Green. I mean, it's G-Sync compatible. They probably don't want me to say free sync, but it is free sync, it's G-Sync compatible. I mean, splitting hairs, really. G-Sync compatible technically means that Nvidia has validated it. And so you can take your you can take your compatibility into your own hands, which is what I had to do with literally every monitor that I have. Not one single monitor that I tested is on the approved list. But this testing, except for that one weird result with the Pixio, this testing shows that. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, when you look at like the GTX 2060, when you look at competing cards on the market, I mean, the 2060 is it going to push? Is it going to be like the best deal for 1440p? 
the 2070 to 2080, the 2080 Ti, you're kind of making the case for really high frame rate, 1440p, mostly 4K. And FreeSync or G-Sync really makes a lot of sense in those scenarios. But the 2060, it's just not as much horsepower. But you look at the 2060 and you look at these 144 hertz refresh rate monitors, all of a sudden it's like, well, I mean, yeah, the 2060 can't push 4K, but for 144 hertz or 120 hertz 1080p or 1440p gaming or ultra wide gaming the 2060 might make more sense in those scenarios but that that is some thoughts for another video or at least that's what i'm thinking so mm, maybe vr also just because of the oddball resolution of vr but i'm getting into the next video and i don't want to do that i'm wendell this has been g-sync compatibility testing on korean at least korean monitors you can still buy and free sync monitors if you pick up a monitor or you want to report success or the that you know it's like i've got this monitor and this worked or whatever add to the community knowledge at the level one forums i'm wendell i'm signing out and i'll see you there <laughs> so would you say that what Team Green has done is fly like a G-Sync? No, I, I, I wouldn't say that at all. No, that's terrible. Just utterly terrible.